Hi, everyone. It's Greg here from Just A Mean Podcast, where we chat about the future of making money on the web. Today, we have Simon joining us from Audiotarchy, a streaming platform where artists and labels are paid directly as people listen to their music. Welcome to the show. Hi. Yeah, thanks for having me. No problem. Um, so, sort of diving straight in, uh, I guess, tell us a bit about yourself, your background, and uh, maybe then we'll get on to how, what got you into crypto. I'm a elapsed physicist. I did a PhD in physics, um, did a lot of computing stuff around that, worked on some of the CERN, ex one of the CERN experiments, and then left that for sort of startup infamy and glory <laughs> about 10 years ago. Worked on various kind of big data type startups, got bought by IBM, now working for a uh, another database company. Um, one of my big hobbies is music, like music gear is kind of surrounding. Yeah. <laughs> and so I started kind of thinking about how specifically micropayments could change how musicians got paid. Right. Um, the, there's sort of no, it's no secret that certain platforms are sort of not the most generous or, you know, kind of have a very opaque way of paying their artists. And, uh, so I started talking with a guy called Matt Hamilton, who's, um, who now works for Ripple, but used to work with me. And he was sort of telling me about this thing called Coil. And it's like, that's kind of interesting. Gives you this kind of ability to do this stuff. And I just kind of futzed around with it for a couple of weekends and, and built like a very simple music player that could change payment pointer depending on the track that was being played. Right. So. You, okay. You, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Just like a really simple proof of concept, but it's like, that's such a, the, the Coil stuff is such a gateway drug, <laughs> but also such a simple kind of interface that it's really easy to, uh, build upon. And then off that, I did the grant for the web thing, um, and, uh, built the sort of version one of audio Tarky, um, which this, you know, trying to take that idea and sort of scale it to lots of artists and lots of different music. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Grant for the web is how I think you first popped up on our radar, at least because right. being in that first batch, we were the, uh, guinea pigs. Okay. For the grant program, uh, pr program and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I th I was saying to you before, like we've, we've run in very similar parallel oh, plots correct. as in yeah, we, yeah. we were trying to do video, uh, integration with coil payment pointers, and how you split that up. Um, so yeah, it's just interesting to see the parallel. So in just running the tape back a bit, you, I found it surprising that you didn't say, oh, I know I heard about blockchain via the sort of database inside of my well, life. <laughs> we'd been doing, yeah, I'd been looking at sort of blockchain things. I had, you know, I had friends who were mining Bitcoins when you could mine a whole one kind of thing. Um, and that was always sort of slightly, I think there's valid criticism of blockchain stuff around, like it's a solution looking for a problem. Yeah. It was and, much more and, intangible, wasn't it? Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and this was the first time that I sort of saw a, a crypto thing actually solve a problem that wasn't sort of related to, you know, investment and, and money type stuff. And, and it just kind of, kind of became an interesting, you know, there's a, it was an interesting kind of confluence of, you know, here's, here's music and, and people who aren't, you know, who are making great music, but not getting paid great amounts of money. And here's a way that you can possibly kind of open some of those, uh, coffers up. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, just, and you were working with Matt at the time in, in the database company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Matt kind of had a bit in the, uh, I got the bug <laughs> as it was. Yeah, that, that was fully like, you know, he's, a, he's a fully into the XRP, uh, work yeah. and has been for a long time prior to okay, cool. being employed by, by Ripple. Like mm. I remember him, uh, he was like, oh, I'm going on holiday this weekend. I was like, oh, wait, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm going to drive my van to Amsterdam to go to an XRP meetup. Amazing. <laughs> and, he and he's like, yeah, I, I paid for beer with XRP and all this kind of stuff. And he was like, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and it's interesting, like, like, I think the thing that's interesting with XRP, especially is that it's, it is trying to solve a problem. You know, it, it's, it's about how fast and how cheaply can you move money around, like or value around. Right. Yeah. And that's a very different beast to the Ethereum's and the, and the Bitcoins. Yeah, it's completely different sort of use case. I think that was one of the things that initially drew me to XRP um, and sort of this whole ecosystem coil. I sort of lump in with that a bit. Well, <laughs> as yeah, you, I mean, as it was a coil is using XRP under the yeah. <laughs> you know, to do those kind of, you know, 0 0.01 of a penny type payments. If it, yeah, and it just fascinated me that remittances would huge, huge market. And yeah, it just seems such like a nice fit for payments because 
everyone was talking about crypto as payments, you know, using Bitcoin day to day, which, you know, now we look back and it's just never going to happen really. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe I'll be proven to be wrong with lightning network and all these sort of scaling things on Bitcoin. But for me, yeah, it was always XRP filled that, that need better than the rest. Right. <laughs> yes. And, and it's that just sort of, it's the same with like the NFT thing, like if, if an NFT costs, let's say $50 to create, right. Then the value of that thing that you're NFT has to be, you know, at least $51, right. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, um, if you're, if you're minting an NFT and it costs a fraction of a penny, then suddenly you can do some really weird and interesting things, right? Like you can start doing stuff where the NFT, like there's the, the NFT safe, which I think is a great idea. Like, right. Like. Yes, I saw this. Ownership of the NFT lets you into the safe. Yeah. And, and that could be that you then trade the NFT for very expensive. So, you know, this NFT is worth millions. Or it could be this NFT is worth nothing because you've paid me externally for something, right? Like, yeah. You know, you know a key safe for a house, right? You get the thing on Airbnb and you've paid me through Airbnb, you get this NFT and then, um, you get access to the thing. You could do treasure hunts. You could do all sorts of kind of like. I was just thinking of, um, for whatever reason, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts and Wordly has been coming up so often. And I was thinking just then, like, I wonder if you could make a game where you open the safe each day, like a, an NFT is issued and someone like bids for it and then you get whatever is in the safe. Yeah. <laughs> and it could be like some random stuff. I don't know. But you could be, there, there was this, um, uh, like, I don't know, 15 years ago or so, uh, the band Nine Inch Nails did this kind of weird on and offline kind of alternate reality game kind of thing. Okay. And there was all these like, you know, there was USB keys hidden around the city. And if you found one, then that had a clue on it. And then you went online and you found something and you had to hack a thing. And then in the right. image, there was sort of another link and there's all these kind of breadcrumbs dotted around. And then it ended up with like, you know, you got an invite. If you, if you worked out all the clues, you got an invite to the launch party of their new album or something like that. It was that kind of a thing. <laughs> and it's fascinating that I think those, those kind of things are really cool. And you can imagine how, like, if you've got, if every one of those NFT clues costs $50, you're not going to do that. Right. No. But if it costs like 0.0001p, then actually doing that would be great and fun and interesting. And you've got all these kind of different ways of interacting with people. Um, so is that sort of the plan for audio talkie? So obviously you've kind of chronologically, we've built audio talkie as a proof of concept with yep. Gram for the web, looking at streaming money. Yep. And now you've just been announced or a previous wave, you got another grant from XRPL this time yep. and you're building NF something to do with NFTs for audio talkie. Yeah. That's... So the sort of first version of it's going to be just, you know, you can mint an NFT. Um, the NFT will be, um, so only artists will be able to mint NFTs. I think there's, there's been a few sort of scam or let's say well-intentioned, but not but rather naive things perhaps would be. Yeah. <laughs> just thinking about my lawyers. Um, <laughs> so you're going to put in like KYC or sort of like verification yeah, so somehow be, to get artists so, to verify themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the idea is that you, we're going to use. Zum as the sort of login method for the admin interface of audio talkie. So you'll, you'll, you'll QR code scan your way in. Yep. And then that immediately ties, you know, Fred, the artist to our Fred zero, zero, blah, 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 the wallet. Right. Yep. Um, and then, so that means that I know that when Fred says, this is my music and there's sort of, you know, T's and C's that say, don't upload someone else's music, obviously. Um, when Fred says, this is my music, I'd like to make an NFT of it. Um, that I know that that's true, right? There's a, yep. that, that relationship has been established. Um, and then the idea is that the artists will be able to, um, add additional content. So you might have like the album and then you might have some additional artwork or, uh, outtakes or demos, or, you know, this is the acoustic version of the thing. And that becomes exclusive to the owners of the NFTs. Yeah. So I really like this idea again on a podcast long ago, I was listening to some, uh, someone from outlier ventures, which is a big web three accelerator talking about this idea of dynamically adding stuff. So let's say you get some new art and, or this artist goes into like the metaverse concert and there's like stuff around that, like 3d models, being able to add that to the NFT somehow would be 
amazing because it becomes sort of like a, a nice little bundle rather yeah, than and air dropping it, them constantly. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's also this thing where you can do, there's a, there's a sort of, um, these are plotter artists, you know, the, the pen plotters that draw these amazing pictures. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Rev Dan Cat, his name is, and, um, he wrote this really nice blog post, really long, but like really well thought through blog post on NFTs and art, um, very worth reading. Um, and, and his little point was like the, the NFT gives you that sort of capability to sort of link the real world with the, the digital. And suddenly you can have these things where these things could evolve or not necessarily be a fixed point in time, but also you have these series, right? So I can make 10 NFTs and call that series one of the same image as the next hundred NFTs that series two. And I say that series one NFTs are worth more money than series two NFTs. Yeah. Right? Cause there's only 10 of them. Yeah. Right. Right. A bit like a first run of a LP or something. <laughs> first edition book or whatever. Right? Yeah. Um, but the thing there is that there's, I think there's still this, um, you know, there's, there's still a gap in people's understanding or, or mental model around NFTs is like, well, if they're both pointing to the same JPEG, what's the difference between one and the other? Whereas if you say there's additional things that this gives you access to, maybe that first run of 10 NFTs or yeah, that first run of 10 NFTs, you get like the outtakes of the re release and access to stems to remix the songs. Whereas the next one, you just get additional artwork, right? Like yeah, yeah. only a way of kind of differentiating them uh, right and adding value that's sort of differentiating as well like someone might not really care about the outtakes and they just want to give the artist a bit more money and are happy to have some additional artwork i think mm. um so yeah we're, we're building out the nft platform we've sort of given the the site a bit of a refresh from a sort of ui point of view um made it a bit easier to kind of find stuff and navigate around and what have you uh fix some bugs always um but yeah we're building the nft platform now um, I was on the Ripple DevX, um, uh, podcast a few weeks ago. The live stream with Matt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's sort of, um, POC kind of thing that we built an open source. Um, the intent with sort of, we're going to try and open source anything that's not kind of unique IP basically. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's sort of our approach in terms of composability. That's the main draw of blockchain and. Right. Uh, just having one point of differentiation or X points of differentiation and then everything else is open source or APIs sort of all the way down is, is definitely. Yeah. And it's, it's really cool approach. how like, um, <laughs> there definitely seems to be a very strong kind of open community around the XRP L stuff. Yeah. Like there, there's definitely sort of this good push to sort of it. It's just kind of plumbing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some weird in there. Uh, hard to access stuff. Um, yeah, so that's, that's cool. Um, and then the NFTs will be, like I said, the, the artist will log in with a, a ZUM token and I'm sort of wondering about how we, there's an interesting problem there of how you bootstrap that in. Like we've got 200 people on the site already. How right. do we give them access to their account when I don't, yeah. So there's, there's some fun tricks to play and uh, to work out there, but, but that'll be fine. Um, and then, um. And then the artists will be able to mint stuff. They'll be able to kind of make these different series of NFTs and they'll be able to upload additional content for those NFTs. Um, and then the owner of the NFT, the, you know, the same thing, but as a reader, as opposed to a writer, right? So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. With Zum, I can see that I've got this, this NFT when I'm listening to a track that I own the NFT of, I, you know, can also listen to the additional content. I can see the other artwork, etc. Okay. And how are you? Okay, this is probably going to get technical now. How, how are you dealing with that? So are you just putting like IPFS links to like hidden links, private links and stuff like that embedded in the NFT, which would be read yeah. by your platform and can show you, you've got, I guess you've got a, a audio stream sort of feature in, in the platform. So then it's just showing the metadata yeah. attached to the NFT. <laughs> At the moment, the NFT will point to an audio talkie URL. And then behind the scenes, I'll have a big S3 bucket. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I sort of, I'm mumming and ahhing around the IPFS stuff. Um, uh, I need to sort of 
that's probably kind of rev two of this stuff is like working out how the longer term storage piece kind of comes together. Um, but I think, I mean, as neat as IPFS is, there's sort of interesting issues with it and, and just a big yeah. fat S3 bucket is kind of, it's cheap and effective and it would definitely, uh, I, I mean, we are approaching it from like progressive decentralization sort of thing, that, that sort of playbook, um, yep. IPFS was the way we went down for the open source thing, but I think for some of, well, a fair bit of our stuff, a, AWS <laughs> start with, and then, um, yeah. I, yeah, like you say, IPFS or Arweave is the other one we're looking into at the moment, um, right. cause they support all different kinds of stuff and it's, uh, it seems to have some pros that IPFS misses out. Right. Yeah. It's an, it's an interesting one cause it's sort of like, I remember I'm old enough <laughs> to remember when, um, BitTorrents were kind of a big thing and, and all that shit. And you've got the sort of, you know, um, similar leader sort of mentality, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And. And there was a paper that was written, this is back when I was a physicist, but, um, so those physics experiments make petabytes of data a year, right? And so yes. collecting and storing and distributing that is kind of difficult. And so someone said, well, why don't we use BitTorrent as a way of doing that, right? Yeah. And you, you do this analysis and it's like, well, BitTorrenting, you know, illegally BitTorrenting a brand new movie, for example there's going to be lots of people who want that torrent, right? And so, yes. the, so the network will naturally kind of make that thing very available. Yep. But if the only person, if there's only one person that wants that thing, <laughs> works against you anyway, right? Like it's sort of, you, you maybe get it on your computer, but it's not quick and, you know, you have that sort of thing of like, there's, there's one other guy who's giving you the thing and it, you can't download petabytes that way. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I think there's that sort of issue with, with the IPFS is like, it will work very well for popular content and it has a, you know, for something that's more niche or, or less well known, the benefits start kind of going a little bit down. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I haven't sort of looked into it enough to sort of, um, make a thing. And I know a guy who works for NFT dot storage, I should probably kind of have a chat with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's just interesting how you future proof these things. Um, yeah. cause one, one of the key arguments in the NFT space is this on chain gang versus the off chain gang <laughs> and yeah. the subsections of that IPFS versus centralized, you know, with all the open sea hacks recently. Yeah. And yeah, it's just something we're considering as well. So yeah, sort of. <laughs> an interesting problem as well. Cause like, I suspect that Amazon's probably got more longevity than like a lot of random little startups kind of thing. And yeah, so, I mean, that's just like Lindy effect, isn't it? <laughs> it's weird. It's just, yeah. It will be around as long as it's been around <laughs> at least. Right. And yeah, so there's sort of that, um, yeah, just kind of from a technical kind of perspective, maybe that's sort of a, a good reason to, uh, to go with it and over other tools, but, mm. um, yeah, but, but the decentralization thing is, is an interesting problem and, and there's a whole kind of, um, there is that sort of, how long does your NFT live? Is it, is it meaningful off? Like if you have an NFT that points to an image in a gallery and the gallery burns down, that NFT is now worthless as well. Right. In the same way that if you have an NFT that points to a JPEG on, on a website and the website runs out of money, right? Like they're the same, it's the same problem. Maybe it's worth more if you're Banksy. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you're Banksy. Right? Only if you're Banksy. <laughs> um, yeah, you got to shred it, then it's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, so this is a, that sort of interesting kind of thing of like, well, you know, in my day job, I spend some time thinking about disaster recovery and all that kind of stuff, right? And the, yeah, yeah. The conditions where it's like, you know, we used, we had a... Uh, previous job, we had a sort of, you know, threat model that included sort of, you know, war, right? Yeah. So not to mention the war, but, um, <laughs> but, but that's the thing that you've got to kind of think about if you're working yeah. for an international company that is worried about, you know, um, that kind of, you know, how does this thing spread across the, the world and stuff? And yeah. And, and you get to a point where it's like, you know, if that kind of, or a comet hits from outer space, you know, <laughs> those sort of events happen 
worrying about whether this database is up or down is probably the least of our worries, right? So, so there's also that kind of like, there's got to be some pragmatic kind of, uh, conversation that comes into the, into the discussion as well as like, yeah. well, it, you know, if, if something really bad happened, are people going to really want to stream a load of music? <laughs> Like they probably have other priorities, right? End of the world, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so audio talking, building NFTs at the moment. How, I guess you're waiting on XLS 20, like a lot of uh, projects yep. at the moment. Yep, cool. Yeah, cool. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting on it. Um, I was waiting on it impatiently <laughs> <laughs> until uh, the beginning of the year when the test net got stood up. Um, yes. And so I basically, the, the thing I was showing on the, the, the Ripple X, uh, dev channel, that's a sort of working end to end POC. Um, so you could mint an NFT, you can sell an NFT, the NFT can have the, um, uh, secondary sale commission piece built in. Um, you could sort of do the full life cycle of the thing. Um, so I'm now turning that POC sort of demo code into something that's a bit more, you know, user friendly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that bring like, there's interesting things like, because I know, because I know that this wallet is this artist, I don't want to show like a big long R string, right? I want to show the artist's face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, like the, but that the... way, just like, what's the UF here? Um, thinking that through, um, so that you actually can say. You know, here's a, here's a thing that is, um, cause there's a lot of this stuff is about building up that trust, right? Like I was saying earlier, yeah. you had these, these sort of incidents, uh, where people have sort of, you know, there was a company that scraped the Spotify public API and then made an NFT for every single album it found. And Jeez. all the artists kind of went, that's not okay. <laughs> and. The company was like, yeah, we're really sorry. We didn't think it through. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> Both hacks. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like stuff like that just really undermines the sort of story in general, right? Like, yeah, I, I was, I was thinking of BitClout and stuff like that, like where they kind of made profiles ready for people to claim interesting right. sort of growth hack, <laughs> yeah. but, but not weird. <laughs> um, and we're, we're trying to. Like definitely I found with the grant for the web thing, we, we've been, you know, we, we sort of proactively approach a bunch of artists and I would guess maybe half at least were just politely like, what the hell's this? I'm not interested. Like, okay. Was, Cause I was going to ask like, what's the kind of feedback then from the artist side? And um, it's generally been, it's generally been positive. I think there's a. There's definitely a, and I think I put it in the grant report was like, there's a sort of chicken and an egg problem, right? You're not going to get lots of artists until after seeing lots of streams, but you're not going to get lots of streams until the platform's big enough to sort of, like you probably saw that with your video stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's sort of interesting kind of balancing act between, um, you know, making enough, uh, of a, uh, thing to prove stuff, but, but I mean. The way that the platform works, it gets into the last 10 seconds of a stream, um, in terms of payment and, and that's generated enough money to sort of pay the hosting bills for the, for the site. So, oh, nice. That's which good. I assume then translates to artists of, um, you know, a few quid here and there kind of thing. So it's yeah, really, I don't think we've made anyone a millionaire yet, but <laughs> it's sort of enough that it's, you know, it's a valid kind of avenue, but, but it definitely this sort of. The whole kind of crypto is weird and possibly illegal and possibly this and possibly that just sort of countering that is, is quite a challenge. Um, yeah, I mean, we're very conscious of the, uh, FCA enforcement and stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I got a fun email from my lawyers, <laughs> uh, in the middle of the week, but I need to kind of fully digest over the weekend to work out like where things like, like where the line is between what we're doing now, like certainly what we're doing now is not FCA shaped at all, but the NFT yep. stuff, you start getting into a territory of like, well, actually 
Um, yeah. Where, Roy royalties being case in point in that. Like. <laughs> it's the KYC, et cetera. Um, yeah. And there's some challenges as well with like, um, you know, we have T's and C's that say, you must be the rights holder. You must have permission to upload this, yada, yada, yada. But how do you uh, enforce that? <laughs> yeah. The, the only thing you can do is trust and then have a sort of, you know, takedown process when someone comes along and says, no, this isn't, yeah. you know, this is mine. Um, I want it back. Um, <laughs> but the NFT stuff makes that sort of substantially harder, right? Yeah. Uh, especially like the thing where an NFT points to a URL that we control and we can kind of maintain what's behind the scenes. Um, you've got that interesting thing of like, we, we could have an NFT that then points to a thing that is nothing, right? Like, or a big thing that says, you know, lawyers came here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause... Um, but the, um, but then you've got this, sort of, the, the flip side of that is that that then undermines what an NFT is doing and what an NFT is for. And so this is again, an interesting kind of balancing act yep. between, um, yeah, what the thing is and what the thing can do. So. Yeah, I was looking at a platform the other day that's um, sort of, it, it it links all the legal docs as well, importantly. Um, so there's always like the documentation going with the NFT. Right. Um, and they're trying to create a new standard on it um, sort of thing. But yeah, I, I, did, I did think for us, like we could look into that and say, you know, this, have the legal doc as the metadata as well, like linked to a PDF basically. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the thing there is, so there's interesting, one of the things I've been thinking about is, um, so say, say an artist wants to put on music on the site, make an NFT of that album, and then wants to put up like bits of the tracks for folk to then do remixes of, right? Like yes. The NFT, yeah. The samples. You get sample back, right? Um, the, the challenge then is how do, how do the, what are the permissions or what are the licensing of those sample packs? Cause it's not the same as the album, right? Like yeah, <laughs> with buying the NFT, the album that gives you the rights to listen to the album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're giving out the, the sample packs, then there's an implicit, like, so that you could do something with them. So, so now the NFT, the content of the NFT has to have different licensing for different parts of it. Right. And that those, you might say, um, you know, this NFT sample pack, uh, you're allowed to kind of remix for your own use, but you're not allowed to make music money off of, right? And, and so that, that's one sort of thing where you might be like, anything that you want to put out, you can, but we want to have some, you know, compensation. Yeah. Cause I was going to say, if we're trying to get to this world of automated payments, like how then do you set up oracles to feed into right. the smart right. contracts? Oh, this person's made X from Spotify sort yeah. of thing is like. And he's a real head scratcher, <laughs> like, yeah. quite literally. <laughs> there's another, um, there's another, uh, grant for the web, uh, awardee, uh, called Kendra and they do stuff where yes. they're looking at audio streams and saying, you know, this 20 seconds is going there. And then that 20 seconds goes over there and yeah. So that kind of stuff's interesting. Um, and I know another, um, the guys that I'm working with on the legal stuff, they, they've been doing things with other companies that are looking at those kind of smart contract type stuff as well. Yeah. The grant, that's grant for the web again, isn't it? Think, yeah. Yeah. I think I've spoken to Kendra, um, yeah. it's a long time ago now, but yeah. <laughs> they're doing good things. And, and it's the sort of, you, you can imagine a thing where you say, you know, one of the things that the, the player that we built like two summers ago, um, it lets you have multiple, uh, multiple IOP, so payment pointers. Uh, yeah. The endpoints. Yeah. Yeah. For a given thing. And so, so you could have a thing where it's like, you know, it starts with a drum intro. Okay. The drummer gets the first five seconds and then, then the band is getting the next 20 seconds and there's a guitar so half an hour and then that goes. To the guitar. <laughs> so you yeah. can do things like that, but you quickly get into like, yeah, that's complicated. And then there's in, another interesting one we've had is we've, we've got a few label, like local Bristol labels, uh, signed up. Um, and then you get into the interesting thing where, well, the label owns the rights to the thing, not the artist. Yeah. And then the songwriter owns a bit of it. And then, yeah. the... <laughs> and then because, you know, the, the type of labels we've had sort of, some of them are, you know, some of them are putting out, you know, 
an artist is putting out a release with one label one month and then another label the next month, right? And so now the artist object or the artist entity in the system is a really complicated thing because you, from a sort of user perspective, you want to see, when you go to see Fred, the, you know, Fred, the rad drum and bass guy, you want to see all of Fred, the rad drum and bass guys releases, mm. but from a payment point of view, those releases are from different labels and therefore the money goes in different directions. And so, so the, the payment point, has to be at the, the label level. But when I bring in the, the administration piece and the NFT stuff, it's like, well, who, who owns Fred, the rad drum and bass guy that can then make NFTs. And so there's this whole kind of like yeah. weird <laughs> thing, right? Um, and looking at like Bandcamp, the way they do it is they just sidestep it. And so like, if you go to Ninja Tune, for example, they'll have, um, Roots Maneuver releases, but Roots Maneuver also has his own page. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so there's all that kind of thing, but, um. Yeah, so there's sort of these interesting kind of data model type problems that are kind of driven by the fact that money is flowing around the system. Right? Yeah. Like, that makes it a bit more kind of serious as opposed to just kind of what's the best UX kind of thing. Yeah, it does feel like this sort of crypto projects heavy upfront cost, but once that's in, it's right. amazing. I mean. It's tricky because you then have to compete with sort of getting people from the old world into the new world. Ideally, you'd have a nice little plugin for the old world um, that you wouldn't have to then growth growth hack your own system to. But like, how how do you do the oracles and stuff? And uh, yeah, it's tricky. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's this sort of interesting thing of like the way I the way I'd like Audio Talkie to kind of grow is this sort of just organic and gentle. Like I'm not I'm not looking for like weird. I've had sort of conversations with VC type firms and it's like, well, I don't really want that. I don't want to have to like, you know, have this thing demonstrate 30% growth year on year. And, yeah. You know, and so actually the sort of gentle kind of growth and solving some of these problems and, um, you know, being able to say, you know, it's, it's been a really good exercise in like, what's the MVP, what's the minimum thing here. And then you can kind of build that and then you go to the next one and say, okay, cool. We've got this. And, um, and so trying to be really open and honest about like, you know, this is how, this is how money flows. This is where things are, um, is really important. And, and it's just, a, it, it, it drives a different kind of coming at it with that kind of mindset. It drives a different set of behavior, right? Like I'm, I don't yeah. need to do a thing where I, you know, pull out a load of information from Spotify's API, right? Because I'm yeah. not intending to go that way. Um, now in five years time, you know, A, the, you know, things could happen along the way, but if you get to a point where you've got thousands of artists on there and they're all happy and compensated well and all that kind of stuff, you don't need to have millions of artists, right? Like, no, that's true. It's something like, it's like 80,000 hours of music is uploaded to Spotify a day or something ridiculous. Like it's sort of. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I thought, I thought you were going to say a second. Like I could believe either way. <laughs> you know, you know, some, some like, you know more music is put on Spotify in a day than a human is ever going to consume in the same way that yeah. you've got like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So it's like, well, actually I think there's an, there's an interesting space and it's sort of a nexus between the sort of crypto world and the music world where, you know, you, you find a set of musicians who are interested in the crypto world, who have fans that are either very dedicated or interested in the crypto world as well. And suddenly you've got like a little community and that little community can establish itself and do good things. And it doesn't need to be this huge sort of Spotify level. Yeah. You know. And this is the main difference between web two and web three, disintermediating it. You don't need those huge rounds of financing and stuff to prop up a venture because like a DAO could appeal to a thousand people and be highly profitable because there's no admin cost in theory. Um, <laughs> uh, <it's bad>. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. And, and, and there's an interesting thing as well. Like one of the things that we, one of the things that's really interesting with the coil with monetization stuff is like a lot of times you need to create an account with a service so that you can then pay that service or pay the like bank camp. You have to create an account on bank camp to be able to buy record. Yeah. Um, and that's great. Fine. But what's interesting with, um, with coil is that I can, 
receive payment. I can transmit payment to artists without knowing who it's coming from. Yeah. And so I can emphasize privacy, uh, of the consumer, like Spotify very definitely is profiling you and, and making kind of, you know, his recommendations based on your habits and stuff like that. And that's, you know, in some ways that's great. And it's really, you know, it's a fun way of finding new music and all that kind of stuff. But on the other hand, it's a bit creepy and, and you're kind of, you are the product, right? And it's that kind of world. And so with this kind of model, you can kind of say, well, actually I don't need to do that. And, and, and there are still ways of being able to generate like, um, a recommendation graph or, um, you know, you've listened to these three tracks, other people have listened to those three tracks and then they listen to these other three tracks. Why don't you listen to these other three tracks now? You can still do that without having yeah. that kind of detailed profile of, of an individual. Um, and so, and, and likewise with one of the other things I've been building and that's not crypto related, but it's audio type related is playlists, right? I want to be able to create playlists and save them. Now, normally you would need an account to do that, right? Because I need a, <laughs> I need an account to be able to say this is thing, but actually there's some, uh, offline first, um, web tech that it's called PouchDB that lets you build a database inside the browser. And so oh, now I can store in the browser, your playlist, um, and then, um, I can share that playlist as well. I can like compress the the result of the list of identifiers of tracks. And so I can send you my playlist and you can still hear, hear the same tracks and stuff like that. And so you can still do these things that, you know, it would be much, it would be much easier to sort of have a database that was internal and, and held that playlist, but actually you can still do it if you kind of put your head to it. Yeah. And even if people, you know, you could even give people the option to opt in. I've seen a lot of people, um, that are protocols and stuff being spun up for sort of opt in and earn from your data. Right. And that's another route you could take like, yes. Okay. We have your data, but you get the money, you get the compensation for it. Yeah, yeah. And that's just yeah. the deal. <laughs> you know, I spoke at a conference years ago, uh, mm. this sort of stuff. And there was a guy on the, another speaker who was talking about, um, sort of public policy type stuff. Okay. It's, yeah. It's really interesting how people are willing to give, you know, Facebook and Google and, you know, insert social media companies, um, basically all of their information in exchange for being able to host photos yeah. <laughs> that they refuse as a point of principle to give that information to government, local government. Right? <laughs> so it's, it's, and it's the same information, right? And, and so it's like, well, you know, what if you said you give us more information so that we can plan better and as a result, your council tax goes down, right? Yeah. But those sorts of things become a feasible, um, I'm not sure that they, how feasible they are, but you, you get into an interesting sort of place where people were, people, I think people are sort of waking up to what social media companies have been doing for the last yeah, in a big way. <laughs> um, but there was definitely there was a period where people were basically blindly giving away huge amounts of information about themselves mm. and GDPR being a very sort of positive reaction to that. And, and yeah. Yeah. He just got this interesting place of like, what does, what does, uh, what does an individual's kind of likes and dislikes kind of equate to financially, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally put a price on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So sort of rounding up, cause I think we're probably, yeah. I don't know where we are, half an hour mark ish, <laughs> give or take. Um, I think we actually hit all the points I was going to ask, sort of like the grand vision <laughs> and, um, all that stuff. Um, I don't know if there was anything else you wanted to kind of chat about while we're here or pe let people know, like when, when the launch is. Oh, and... um, <laughs> we're still kind of, we're building out the thing, um, yep. uh, and we're going to try and tie that to some grants ourselves. We're going to be using some of the money that we got from Ripple as a, a grant to encourage artists to kind of come on and, and, and make, uh, music, um. That would probably be, we're going to sort of do a sort of mini version of that and then expand it out nationally or yeah. Um, so that's the sort of, you know, that's the next step. So the next kind of rest of this year, really, uh, yeah, it's just sort of, it's that again, trying to grow it organically and not yeah. doing and stuff. Um, and I might try and come up to, to London to, I think you guys are running a meetup in, uh, yes. Yeah. End of March. 
uh, 31st, if, yeah, if I'm but, correct. And uh, yeah, that should be good. We should have some talks and stuff. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can get up to... I haven't sort of left this office, it feels like, for... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Thanks for having us on. That's good. No, um, yeah, really interesting conversations. Uh, hopefully the tangents were <laughs> interesting to everyone. I, I, I had fun, so that's, that's, all, that's all that matters. <laughs> um, all information I'll link down below. You can check out all that. Um, and yeah, please do get involved. Give us a like, give us a share and uh, subscribe to hear the next uh, project we're talking to. And uh, I think that's it for today. So thanks again, Simon, for coming on. Pleasure, pleasure. Thanks for having us. We'll uh, leave it there. Talk to you soon. Cheers.